never say coming soon. We say, here it is, delivered. For us, it's entirely natural that we enter the space. All I did was take a, co a copy of the software I use on four other exchanges globally, put it into the, the crypto space, integrated with five different blockchains, created the wallet, launched it. And guess what? It's more about the players that already transact on LMAX Exchange. They immediately come with liquidity. I would argue today I've got some of the best liquidity on the street. If you look at the, uh, the aggregators out there um, on the retail sites, I tell you in Bitcoin alone, I'm already top five. So I hope we'll have some new customers. You know, I'll give you one example. So um, the asset management space are talking to me. Now, I cannot face them in fiat. You know that. That's mostly because of the credit disintermediation. But in the crypto space, they seem happy to face broker dealers and exchanges like ourselves. So that's a new avenue for us. Uh, I'll have to see how that goes. But we have to also be realistic. It will be the existing players that trade on LMAX exchanges um, globally who will initially seed, if you like, LMAX Digital. Now, the good news is there that that numbers every bank on the planet, every major non-bank on the planet, and over 180 retail brokers. So I see us as facilitating the marketplace, helping to evolve the market structure. So it might be that the end retail user is trading on LMAX Digital, but I don't face them directly. I face them via um, other retail brokers. And the guys that uh, I was on the panel with just now, guess what? They're going to be customers of, customers of mine because they're broking OTC deals or they're trading on the other retail platforms, but they want some consolidated place to trade with like-minded institutions and in some cases just transfer risk easily. It's quite hard to transfer risk today with all the retail platforms that are out there. If you were designing market structure, no, that wouldn't be the way you design it. That said, if you looked at LMAX Exchange's business model, I've always been regulated as a broker dealer, and I've always been regulated as an MTF, right? And there's Chinese walls between the two. Now, that broker dealer always sits on client funds. I sit on a quarter of a billion dollar of, of client funds today that transacts on the LMAX Exchange MTF. So the custody of coin is just the same as that, that business model. I will have a regulated digital broker and a regulated digital exchange. So it's natural that we have to have a custody solution. That said, in fiat, the banks disintermediate. And look, I'm not, um, we wouldn't be too egotistical there. I'm very happy for banks to be there. They have their place. You know, you would naturally rather park $100 million with Goldman Sachs, Citibank, J uh, JP Morgan, other banks are available than LMAX, and I'm happy with that. So, but if you go the other, on the other way, Every efficient exchange out there in equities, in futures, also on clearinghouses. So it could be that's what happens, that's the evolution. In the meantime, we have to play with the cards we're dealt, which means we kind of do everything. I'd say it's a level above custody, actually, which is credit. Credit is the biggest issue I see in the marketplace today. And that's not something necessarily that I can solve, because I'm not going to have the balance sheet that lends that credit. I'm not going to have the, B, the PB style um, balance sheet. So maybe that will come. And I think the, uh, you know, the banks that are dusting off their epaulets currently may be the ones uh, who help create that credit disintermediation. The knowledge transfer works two, way, two ways, crypto to fiat. And first of all, let's look at what we can learn from them. They have done a phenomenal job and the evangelists out there in selling and marketing this space. They should not be criticized for um, some of the technical difficulties they may have had, because there simply was a gold rush, especially last summer, where you know, platforms were opening 100,000, 150,000 accounts a day. So they can learn nothing from us on that. On sales and marketing, they can learn nothing. Um, the high-level maths and cryptography, they have that covered. Um, but I think what they can learn from the fiat side is that liquidity is king, to pay respect to liquidity, and liquidity begets flow. It's a self-fulfilling circle. They need to, if you like, respect liquidity providers, 
and be sure that they can provide it in all their assets that they list. It's all very well to take a, a listing fee for a new ICO, but if you can't offer a two-way price, then you're going to have at least suffer some, a lot of reputational risk, but you could suffer some financial risk on that as well. And then the other thing I think is um, moving away from the cloud onto what you'd expect in low latency exchange, industrialized scale uh, technology. They can buy it, they can rent it. They probably shouldn't build it because it's well established, not just in fiat, not just with LMAX Digital, but with all the futures exchanges and all the equities exchanges out there today. Um, I think that's where they could learn from us. So I think it's two way. For me, as I guess an older guy in the space now, um, I find it very exciting, a very exciting experiment that we have this knowledge transfer of uh, two very different sets of people. Spot versus derivative liquidity. I think derivative liquidity is way, way too early. It's embryonic. I think it's a risk to market structure. I'm amazed at the people that have, uh, have, have gone out there so early. Uh, it's a tiny fraction of the cash market. Derivatives markets are built on efficient cash markets. We need an efficient cash market. It's as simple as that. The next time there's a crash or a ramp, is the liquidity going to be there in futures? What is the reference price they're using? I question those references prices. And if you look at, you know, grown-up exchanges using reference prices from five, six retail platforms, I just think it's crazy, Galen. And it, you know, the open interest in those products isn't there. Personally, I think that's a, a PR stunt. Liquidity, another question, fragmentation thereof across the plethora of retail platforms and you say institutional platforms, I believe we're the only one. It will consolidate in size. Size will consolidate. I sincerely hope it's, it consolidates around LMAX Digital. But we believe in the ecosystem. So I think all those retail platforms out there should take liquidity from the institutional grade exchanges that are out there. Why not? It's exactly what happens in the fiat foreign exchange space. When I have lots and lots of retail brokers who are much better at acquiring and servicing retail customers than I am. But I'm much better at technology and providing liquidity and amalgamating liquidity. So they take it from me. It's one less job they have to do. Um, the retail platforms out there, they're trying to do everything. I don't believe you can do everything efficiently. Focus on what they're good at, which is sales and marketing. Some web technology, yes, focus on that. And leave the liquidity to the capital markets guys who frankly make much less of a margin than they do.